wherever you are. I want you to just come to God with a broken spirit tonight. You believe God can heal you tonight. You believe God can make a way for you. I want you to get up out of your seat. I want you to give it all. God's love, God love, the broken spirit. So tonight, worship with us. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Somebody help me see.
Why don't we come to you and worship our God? Let's worship him. Oh, yes, God. The Bible in John 4, 24. God is the spirit. They that worship him in, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Oh, let's worship him. Wherever you have, at your home, in your car, wherever, how many? Let's worship our God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. A couple of announcements and prayer. But I want to say this. For those of you that are home, those of you that are here from where, they already preach this. But I want to remind this tonight. That the Bible told us in Matthew 18, 20, that for where two or three gather in my name, that I'm going to be in the height, in the midst of death. I just want to remind you tonight, even though you and your family alone, yeah. we still worship our God. We still know His name. We hold the name about heaven. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have a couple prayer requests up here tonight. Brother Will, his parents, pray for his parents. Mary Calder, Lynn Barker, Jennifer Baker, and Brother Benito. Brother Ray, pray for his mom, Vicky, Sister Scout. Pray for Happy and Travis and their baby on the way Liam and the Church of the Dry Seas. And pray for Sister Charity and Recovery after surgery, Sister Wendy and Sister Vicky. We have a couple of uh, announcements for the Dites and Hovering. We still have one here at the prayer at the church in front of Sister Margaret's office and the online ones. I'm going to let Brother Matt help me. Be specific, go specific on those. So thank you. Why don't we go to our, if you have your pipe, I want to turn our attention tonight to the book of Revelation. To the book of Revelation, if you're there, if you're there chapter 22, the last chapter. Verse 7, Behold, I come quickly. Bless he that giveth the saying of the prophecy of this book. Verse 12, And behold, I come quickly, yes. and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. According as his work shall be. And verse 20, the same chapter, He which testify these things said, Surely, I come quickly. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We thank you for what we felt tonight in this house. We felt tonight in our homes, everywhere we are in this world. Lord, touch, touch us, minister to us, anointing, worship, Lord. We, we call on your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was doing my whole Bible study on this, and it, I come across this chapter, especially the book of Genesis, the first book of Genesis in the days of Noah, and I jump from the book of Genesis to the end of the book, and something got hold of me, and I told myself, yes, this is what they've been preaching on. This is what they've been preaching on. I grew up in a family, and everywhere, and I know you guys are listening, that they don't preach the back end of this book. Yeah. Right, right. They yeah. reference them, but they don't preach about it. Right. I want to tell you today that we are living in the last days. Yes. We are witnessing the signs of the end times. Right. I believe with all my heart that there's going to be a rapture of church that catch the way. Yeah. Yes. The second coming of Jesus Christ. Right. Right. This is what the end of the battle, the end of this Bible talks about. But the question today, are you ready? Are you prepared? Right. In the last days, it's going to be like the days of Noah. That's right. I want us to turn our attention to Genesis, to the book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 12 and 13. And God took upon the earth. And behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way 
upon this herd, upon the herd. And the God said unto Noah, The hand of all flesh is come before me. For the herd is filled with violence, through the herd would fill with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the herd. Yeah. Noah, we all know in the story, that Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Right. Noah was just man. Yeah. Noah was just man. He's perfect in his generation. And he walked with God. Yeah. But he found grace in the eyes of God. God commanded Noah, next, next verse 14, make the heart of cover wood. Yeah. Yeah. No one never seen or heard of any heart or a rain in those days. Right. Or no waters to launch the heart. Right. Yeah. But Noah just do this, just to do the same. Follow everything what God had commanded him. Yeah. Noah, faith by faith, he decided to do what God had, him, God had commanded him. Yeah. Those days people were making fun of him. They were hurt that the rain is coming and they were laughed because those days they never heard of a rain. To the people of the day, it's impossible for them to be rain. To us today, it's unbelievable for us that people don't believe that there's going to be a rapture of church. Right, right. In the days of Noah, it's just like today. Violence, Mary, giving in marriage. All mess it's happening today. Yeah. But it's double. You're right. It's double to what we have seen experience today. The Bible says clearly it mentioned everything else. When we come back and look at our community, yeah. it's happening. It's right. happening. Right. Yeah. Right. And you cannot tell me that it's not we're not in the last days. Right. The Bible tells us in the beginning until the end of this Bible talks about everything that's happening today. Yeah. In Matthew in the book of Matthew, I want us to turn our attention to Matthew 24. Right. Verse Matthew 24, chapter 24, and verse 37. But as the days of Noah were so shall as the coming of the Son of Man. Yeah. For as in the days that they were before, that before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying. Even in marriage, until the day that no one entered their heart. And do not until the thought came and took them all away, so they saw the same, though she saw also the coming of the Son of Man be. Right, right. When we go back to our verse 7, they already preached on this to us that the nation shall rise against nation, yeah. kingdom, kingdom against kingdom, desolate. Earthquake in Cyrus places. Yes. You cannot tell me that's not happening. Amen. It's happening. Yeah. The question is, are you ready? Are you prepared? Yeah. Oh, yes, God. Yeah. Are you praying? Are you fasting? Are you reading your pipe? Are you, make, are you making sure that what you're doing is yeah. pleasing God or man? Yeah. Come on. If you call yourself a Christian, but living in a continuous lifestyle of sin, you're not a Christian. Right. You're not prepared. That's right. By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's part of me when I come across this Bible study, this message, when I was doing my message. Why? Not only me, but I know that I have family, I have friends, I have people that are watching, and I love you. But I want to tell you today that you cannot say Right, right. I'm heading there, but it's actually dirty. It bothers me because we were blinded. We were blinded by the world's offer. The lust of the eyes, yeah. the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Yeah, I'm preaching to you. You're in church, you're not a saint. Right. If you're watching everybody else, right. we'll come to a day of a judgment. Yeah. We'll face the judgment day. Right. And the question is, are you ready? It bothers me when I think about this, because I know I have my mom and my dad, my siblings, and I'm talking this because I love you guys, that you cannot say without Acts 2.38. Right. 
Acts 2.38 is the only salvation message that will save you. Amen. Right. I want to, I want, <clears throat> the Bible told us that we have to be prepared. Yeah. In yeah. Luke 21, chapter 30, chapter 21, and verse 26, right. Right. it says, Watch ye therefore, yeah. and pray always, yeah. that he may be accounted worthy, worthy. to escape all things, that shall come to pass and stand before the man, the son of man. This is what I'm just talking about. Right. I want to be slowly and clear to you so you can understand what I'm trying to say tonight. That you will be accountable for yourself. Right. On the last day. Right. Protect yourself. Stay away. First Peter, I want to try to start our attention to First Peter 5.8. Yeah. First Peter 5.8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Right. Because your adversary, the devil as a roaring lion, walking about seeking who he may devour. Yeah. Right. Every day as we walk through our lives, we have to be careful of what we are doing. We have to be away of our surroundings. We don't know who's going to be the enemy. It can be your pride. It can be your sister. It can be anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I am just trying to tell you, to convince you, that you have to be ready. Yeah. Right. Everything in this world is telling us there's going to be a day that is coming. Right. Stand firm. Stay strong when dry happens. Ooh. Because it will happen. Oh, yeah. right. First Corinthians 16 30. Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Would like be men, would like men, would you like men and be strong. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be stand fast. You gotta be stand strong. But how? If you're not prepared, if you're not, if you're doubting yourself and questioning what needed to be done, go back to the book of Acts, yeah. chapter two. This is where I'm going. Chapter two, verse thirty-seven. They were breaking their heart. Right. Men and brethren, what shall we do? They asked Peter, and Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin. So you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to tell you today that this is the only way that can save you. This is the only key that can lead you to the kingdom of heaven. Right. The book of Revelation. John got the Revelation. He wrote that book. Peter, the book of Peter, he got the keys. He's the one who preached the message on the day of Pentecost. Right. I am thankful that I have a pastor. I have a bishop that tells me some of the scriptures that I have. So if you have your Bible tonight, turn to Matthew chapter number 22. I'm excited about living for God. Amen. I'm ready to go see Jesus. Oh, me too. That's all this, this is making me think about is that Jesus is coming back. Right. Right. Matthew chapter number 22 in verse number 35 says, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, Asked him a question, tempting him, 
and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. We already heard some preaching about this this morning, but it is the first commandment is this, to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all your soul. And here it says, with all thy mind. You got to get your mind in this thing. If any time we've been, our minds have been under attack, it's been under attack. Our minds are under attack right now. There's so much going on in the world today. We have got to get to the point where we're serving God with all of our mind, right. all of our heart, all of our soul. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You can't read the first one without reading the second one because the second one is just as important as the first one. Right. And these two, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let's pray. Lord God, we ask that you help us in the remainder of this service. God, anoint my lips. God, anoint our ears tonight. God, we give you all the glory and praise. God, God, help us in this, this hour. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. You can be seated tonight. But thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. It's got to be 100%. You can't just love God with 50% of your mind. It's got to be 100% of your mind. Your mind is under attack. Yeah. Our minds get overloaded real easy. Especially somebody like me. You, you can, it doesn't take much to overload my mind. We're all so tired of hearing about this virus. Tell you what, I think they ought to ban the name coronavirus after we're done with this thing. But we're all tired of hearing about it. every single day. All we hear about it. We read the news and it was talked about this morning. And all this fear and all these things that are happening in the news. It, and it just really weighs on your mind. We all want to get back to some kind of normality. Where things were just normal and things were... And it was easy to tell what was going to happen. We were going to get up the next day and go to work and going to come home, take a nap. Whatever your routine was. But that's what... Our minds are under attack. Yeah. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. We don't know what the politicians are going to say tomorrow. And we can get so caught up in all that junk. We can get so, our mind is overwhelmed with, oh man, we heard about this, this conspiracy theory over there. And I just kind of tend to lean towards conspiracy theories just in my makeup. <laughs> and I, when I think about, I mean, you tell me, that is all the government control issue that, man, I start to want to start to believe those things. Yeah. But what's it say? He said it in First in Peter chapter number 5, verse number 8, he says, be sober. Yeah. Right. Right. The sober mind. you you got to be sober. you got to be vigilant because your adversary is still the same. It's that devil. Right. He's a roaring lion. What? Right. He wants to destroy you. Yeah. He wants to get in your mind and get you caught up in all the things that are going on in the world. And get you really your mind off of track. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we got to fight against. Here it says to love the Lord your God with all your mind. You got to get your mind in the right spot. If you have to shut off the news, if you have to turn off your phone, if you got to get off social media, whatever you have to do, you got to make sure that you keep your mind straight. Yeah. Right. Right. It's easy for your mind to just wander. Tell you what, with, without being able to. Assemble all together in the times that we're living in, man, and not having that fellowship like we all used to have months ago. It's easy for your mind to get off track. Oh yeah, man. When all this started coming out, I didn't go get a TV out of the closet. Number one, because I didn't have one in there. Yeah. Okay. But that's what people have done. They thought, well, it's a little. It's time now to just kick back a little bit, watch church in our PJs. Not me. I don't want my mind to get lax. I don't want my mind to get off track. I don't want to get something in my mind that's going to keep me and make me miss something like Brother PJ was preaching about tonight. I don't want to miss a sign. Right. I don't want to miss an opportunity to love on somebody. Yeah. You got to get your mind in this thing. Yeah. Don't run after every conspiracy theory you think about or hear about. Yeah. What you got to do is you got to get in the Word of God. It's never led you astray before. You've got to trust your leadership. Trust your pastor. Why? 
You trusted him with everything else before. You can trust him with this. We made the right decision. We're doing what we ought to be doing. You can get, you can get messed up in your mind thinking. Yeah. About, well, we ought to be doing it like this. We ought to, no, you just got to trust your leadership. They're seeking God. They're, they're inquiring God. What are we doing this time? You got to gird up your mind. Here it says in 1 Peter chapter number 1 and verse 13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Right. Gird up your, the loins of your mind. You got to get your mind under control. That's right. Your mind can play tricks on you. It seems like I preach about the thing, same thing every time I get up to preach. But let me tell you here, your mind can play tricks on you. Yeah. You walk into a dark room and all of a sudden your mind starts telling you about all the boogeymen that are going to jump out on you. And the monsters. Well, your mind will do that too if you're not keeping it focused on the right things. If you're not paying attention. If you're not getting on here and watching their services. If you're not praying. If you're not seeking God. If you're not reading your Bible. Your mind will get you messed up. You'll get angry. You'll get bitter. Yeah. All these things will start coming to your mind. But it says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is brought to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You just got to think it back. When you first got the Holy Ghost and the revelation of Jesus Christ that you had, gird up your mind. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is real. Yeah. Man, when I got the Holy Ghost, I spoke in tongues. Just like they did in the book of Acts. Yeah. Man, you got to get back to that. When everything else seems unreal and everything else seems to be crumbling and falling apart in this world, what you got to think about is what's real. And the realness is this. When I repented of my sins, when I was baptized in Jesus' name, yeah. man, the Spirit filled me and I spoke in tongues. That's what real. That's what is real. you got to get your mind girded up. Yeah. you got to get control of your mind in this day and age. It's more important now than it ever has been. Yeah. Man, you, before in the past, you might be able to check out for a week or two, but you got to stay on it daily. you got to search it out daily. Daily, I'm thinking about it. When I get up in the morning, God, what's going on? What's, what's happening in this earth? I really kind of like these times because it's making people think. It's oh, yeah. making people wake up. It's right. making people wonder what's going on. Yeah. You can't help but just start looking at the news and hearing things going on and start digging in your Bible saying, what does it say in Revelations? Yeah, right. What does all this mean? But the PJ, you were right on it. People got to wake up. They got to understand that this is all by God's design. Yeah. God's shaking the earth. He's shaking it up. You got to get your mind in the right spot. I'm going to get behind my, my leadership, my pastor, my bishop. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get behind him and let him know. Whatever you decide, I'm with you. I'm here. I'm going to do the best I can. Right. I'm thankful to be a part of the song service so I can come here and we worship online and it's, it's different than, than being at home, I know, but you can have God move in your home. Right. You just got to invite Him in there. That's you right. got to do it just like you're at church. Yeah. You can't just sit there and expect God to move. You right. got to get up. You got to stir it up. Yeah. You got to God is just stir up the gift that is in you. Yeah. That's what you got to do is when you when the preaching goes on, you got to get up and get with it just like you're at church. When the song service is going on, you got to get up and get with it just like you're at church. There's no time for you to be lax in this day. You got to turn up your mind. You got to understand where you're at. You got to wake up. God's coming back. We don't have a lot of time left. Right. Right. We don't have a lot of time left. Your mind will start playing tricks on you, though, if you let it. Yeah. It'll get you all messed up. You gotta get, get control of your mind. Take control of your mind. Right. I've heard, I've heard it all my life. I can remember Brother Kirk telling me this one time. He said, "When you don't feel like getting going to church, you gotta get up, get yourself by the collar, and make yourself go to church." Yeah. When you don't feel like praying on Saturday night when there's prayer time, you got to get over to your to your wall, shut the light off, and say, it's time to pray. Blare some prayer music and get to praying. Right. And at my house last night, I felt God in my living room. Why? Because yes. it was prayer time. Yes. Why? I don't want something getting in my mind. Yes. I don't want this devil, this, this adversary, getting control of my mind. Right. Yeah. Here's what it says in Romans chapter 8. If you can turn there. 
It was kind of preached about this morning. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 5 says this. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Yes. If you're fleshly, you're going to want the things of the flesh. He said, there's two dogs on the inside of you. Yeah. Which one you feed the most is the one that's going to win. Well, I started feeding that good dog. That's why when it was prayer time last night, we had prayer started at 9 o'clock. Yes. That's where you ought to be for Lighthouse Church people. Yes. Your neighbors ought to hear you praying. Your neighbors ought to hear your prayer music blasting. Yeah. They're going to make me stay at home. They're going to listen to loud music. <laughs> Man, I'm excited about living for God. I'm excited about serving God with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my mind. Yes, but if you're fleshly, you're going to want the things of the flesh. you got to cut that flesh off. Yes. Don't let it have dominion over you. Right. Let the Spirit work on the inside of you. When you feel that nudge in the morning, you ought to read your Bible. Or you have some scripture come to your mind, you ought to look it up because that's God trying to talk to you. Right. That's the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. He's trying to guide you. Yeah. He's trying to help you with your day. He's trying to protect you. Yeah. Amen. Protection comes from the Word of God. Verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you're carnal minded, you're going to end up dead. That's the end of carnality is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. When you're fleshly and when your mind's on fleshly things, when your mind's just on all the news and all the garbage going on, and you haven't thought about God all day, that's the enemy of God. It's the enemy of God. And it'll end in death. But when your mind stayed on Jesus, and I don't care what you gotta do, maybe you gotta play gospel music, blare it in your house, get your mind on God. You don't gotta wait till Wednesday and Sunday to have church or Saturday night to pray. You can pray Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. It doesn't matter the day, but the thing is, is you gotta get your mind right. right. And when the devil comes in, that enemy, and he starts messing with your mind, just remember, be sober, because that's what his job is, is to get you all messed up. Right. Be vigilant, yep. watch, yep. watch and pray. Why? Because you don't wanna enter into temptation. Yeah. Don't mess around with it. If, if, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. We got to get our minds right. We got to get our minds focused on Him 100%. I want my mind on spiritual things. Right. Yeah. I want to be thinking about spiritual things. Amen. I'm looking for His return. That's all this time has made me do. Really. You never know what you got on the inside until it starts getting tested. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I started thinking, man, all this has done for me is it, it's really just, I know. I know now. Yeah. yeah. I still believe in Acts 238. It hasn't changed my opinion one bit. I still believe Jesus is God. Right. Yeah. I love church. That's what I like to hear is when people are going, I can't wait till we get back together. Yeah. That's what I want to hear. Is, that's how you know you got it on the inside is when you're saying, as soon as they open those doors, you better not get in my way in that altar. Why? Because when I get down there, I'm going to praise God and I'm going to lift his name up. Hey, I'm going to lead songs that night. That's what I want to do. Because I don't know if we'll get to preaching. I'm looking for his return though. I'm thinking about Jesus coming back. I'm thinking about, man, just when I get up in the morning and I look towards that eastern sky, I can just see a pair of hands yeah. coming through there, just rolling it all back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or just thinking about my feet leaving the ground in that rapture. Yeah. It's going to happen. It's in your Bible. Yeah. I'm excited about this time. I'm not waiting for the NBA to open back up. <laughs> That's what people are doing. Yeah. They're saying, and I heard that on the one of the news things I was looking at the other day that they might open back up. It makes me so mad. They ought to stay closed indefinitely. <laughs> Why? Because it's that God has blinded the minds of the... <laughs> Here's what it says. Let me read it to you. Yeah. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 says, If 
if our gospel be hid, it is hid to, hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them. Here's what happens. is people, every day, they wanted to turn on those sports and just veg out and watch them put a ball through a hoop and watch them put a ball through a whatever touched him. But the thing is, is your, your mind's being blinded. Yeah. yeah. You can't even think about the spiritual things of God. Right. The gospel's hid because your mind, you're just benching out in front of your TV. Yeah. I don't have a TV to bench out in front of. That's why, because I know I would. No. I'd probably be watching Hunting Channel. <laughs> so would all you. Yeah, National Geographic. Yeah. <laughs> you said National Geographic. <laughs> watching documentaries. No, I don't want to mess around with any of that. Why? Because I want my mind 100% on what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is I'm going to make my way to heaven. Right. Yeah. I'm going to get to heaven. I'm going to go through those pearly gates. Yeah. I'm going to meet the Lord in the air. And yeah. so shall I ever be with the Lord. Right. But the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Man, you ought to just take all those things that are weighing on your mind and just get them out of your house. Throw them in the trash can. You've got to get your mind girded. Yeah. That's what I'm preaching about. Gird up your mind. Get your mind. Yeah. I'm going to serve the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. Yeah. Gird up your mind. Don't give in to the flesh. You're not going to make it to the end if your mind's not made up. You gotta be in control of your mind. You gotta know where you're going. You gotta know what the book says. It says in Revelations that the Antichrist will call fire out of heaven and deceive many. Right. I don't want to mess around with that. Why? It says if you if you hear about Jesus being over here or over there, don't pay any attention to it. Stay with what you know. Right. That Acts 238. Don't get deceived in this in this end time, this this last hour. You gotta get your mind right. Go read your Bible. That's why you have it. Right. Stick with your pastor. He's praying and he's he's seeking God, the mind of Christ. He's taught the truth to you. You might ask tonight, how do I get control of my mind? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because yeah. it is so important that you get control of your mind. I cannot stress to you enough that if you let your mind go, you'll, you'll be so far gone in such a short time. There's no telling. I don't ever want to be just turned loose in my own mind. Uh. <laughs> Man, it can mess you up quick. I can't stress to you enough tonight that you got to get your mind right. you got to make sure your mind is on the right things. Amen. Philippians chapter number four. Let's look there. says this in verse number four. Here's how you keep your mind right. Okay? Now I'm going to preach a little bit about I'm going to preach a little bit to our minds. Rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah. Verse number four. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Here's the first step of getting control of your mind tonight. Rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah. And again, I say rejoice. Remember what I was talking about? The first time you got the Holy Ghost? You remember how that felt? No, yeah. Start thinking about those times. Yeah. Man, I remember when I prayed through, I was like, Brother Roy, who's preaching this. Didn't they preach amazing this morning? Yeah. Man, God was in this place. But I was right over there too, Brother Roy. And God, man, I remember when I raised my hands and God started dealing with me. And I gave myself to God. Here's what it says. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Yeah. Remember we're talking about getting your mind right. Yeah. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Well, the devil's messing with my mind today. God, I need you to take care of it. Guess what? You start praying like that. He's going to start helping you. Yeah. Why? Because you're just taking advantage. 
advantage of what God's word says. He says, come up to me, bring it to me, I'll take care of your problem. Get your mind on God. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, here's what's going to happen when you start telling God how you feel. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Yes. Hey, your, your people at work don't understand why you're so happy. Your parents don't understand it. But what you've done is you just start complaining to God about it. Say, God, the devil's messing with me. It's all weighing on my mind. Wow. And guess what? That peace, it just enters into your home that passes all understanding. Shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. You ought to just start calling on his name, Jesus. Yeah. Just like you do when you get in trouble. Jesus, I need your help right now. Yeah. Take advantage of it. Jesus. I like this next scripture. Finally, brethren, here's here we go. Remember, you want to get your mind right. Brethren, whatsoever things are true. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. Don't be looking at your, your phone and looking at all those bad reports. All these things we just listed off. Yeah. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Yeah. you got to get your mind in it. I gotta start thinking about the things that are true. Well, what's true? Acts 2 38, and Jesus is God. That's what's true. Whatsoever things are honest. Man, you can just go down the list. You start thinking about things like that. I tell you what, that enemy's gonna leave. That thing that's bothering your mind is gonna leave. That depression is gonna leave. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Those suicidal thoughts are gonna leave. Yes. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Man, you can't beat scriptures like that. No. Man, I want my mind right. right. I want my attitude right. It doesn't matter what the governor says. I'm just going to do what the Bible says. Yeah. Whatsoever things are lovely. Yeah. Whatsoever things are of a good report. Think on these things. Yeah. Think on those revelations you got. Right. Think about that time you got a revelation of one God. Huh. Woo. When he said, I and my Father are one. You know who said that. Yeah. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Who said it? Jesus said it. you got to start thinking about those things you received and learned. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thankful for all the preaching I've grown up with. I'm thankful for all the doctrinal preaching I've grown up with. It's put something on the inside of me. A foundation. Yes. Something I can stand on in this day and hour. Man, I'm excited about living for God. Look at Isaiah 26. Let me turn there real quick. This is good preaching. Amen. You got to get your mind right. You got to gird up your mind. Make sure your mind don't just run away on you. Isaiah chapter number 26. And verse number three says this, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, yeah. because he trusteth in thee. Yeah. Yeah. You mean to tell me that just because I put all my trust in him and my mind stayed on him, guess what? The Bible says right here, he will keep you in perfect peace. Perfect. No, no more dealing with depression. Right. No more dealing with anxiety. I know these things are real, but if you start trusting on God, trusting in God, He That's says, right. if your mind stayed on Him, you'll stay in perfect peace. Yeah. It doesn't matter what comes about. Amen. It doesn't right. matter what comes down the news. Right. You just keep staying on God. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Yeah. Everlasting. Man, I love that scripture. It doesn't, that means in a year from now, guess what? You just keep trusting in God, you're going to have strength. Yeah. You keep trusting in Him, you're going to have perfect peace. Yeah. You can't beat that having peace in your home. Right. Man, I'm excited about living for God. Me too. I want my mind right. Yeah. When did you start quit? When did you quit trusting God? Huh. If He. If he gave you a job and he's done all these things and you've been living for God, 
God for 30 years, do you think he's going to fail you now? No, I think he's going to show himself more strong now. I think he's just ready to just prove himself more to you. But the thing is, you've got to keep your mind on him. Remember, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. In another place, it says strength. God's going to, he said it. In Amos, I believe it says, he, he won't do anything without revealing it to his prophet. Meaning that God's going to, he's going to let us know. I find it interesting that in, in Matthew, when it talks about the virgins, the ten virgins, it says they heard the cry of the bridegroom. Go ye out to meet him. They, they heard him coming. Oh yeah. They were ready for him. They had their oil full. But if your mind isn't in where it should be, your oil won't be full because you'll still be caught up in the news and what the governor's going to say, but you're going to miss out on his return. Yeah. I want my mind full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I want to be thinking about those lovely things, those yeah. pure things. Yeah. Right. Keep Good. your mind right. Yeah. Here's what it says in Matthew chapter number 16. I had to throw this in there because we, we know. Remember it says, and continuing the things that you know and have learned. Here's what it says. You start worrying about what's going to happen and what the government's going to do with all of us. And you can get mixed up in all those conspiracy, conspiracy theories. And I've, I've already talked a little bit about them. But what we've always been taught and what the book says is that he, he, he asked him, let's start at verse number 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Now, I'm thinking about myself and I'm thinking about these times we're living in. And we heard that great preaching this morning about being a servant and talking to our neighbors. And here, remember, I'm trying to talk to you about your mind. Okay? Yeah. Because you're going to have somebody ask you when, you, get, when you get what I'm preaching and you get your mind right, that joy is just going to be overflowing. Right. right. Okay? What he preached about this morning, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. Against such there is no law. When you get that in your heart, people are going to come to you and say, now how come you're so happy about not going to church? Well, you can say, it's not that that I'm happy about, but I'm just full of the Holy Ghost. Huh. And here's what, this is what gets me excited. When I start reading scriptures like this, go home and start reading every one God's scripture you know. That depression's got to leave. When you get your Bible, just type into Google, one God. Okay, into your Bible search app or just type in Jesus and just start reading every scripture you know on Jesus. Right. I tell you what, you're not going to be depressed anymore. You're not going to be saddened anymore. But what's going to happen is you're going you're to want to call somebody and tell them, let me tell you the scripture that I just read. Now here's one that I love. Remember, I'm talking about your mind tonight. Here's what he said. But whom say ye that I am? In verse number 15 and 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, I know who you are. You're our Savior. You're the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church. And here we go. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It doesn't matter what the governor says. It doesn't matter what the worldly leadership says. The gates of hell shall never prevail against your revelation of who Jesus is. The thing is, is you just got to go get your Bible and make sure you know it. Amen. And he told Peter, I'm going to give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then that's where we get Acts 2, 38. That was Peter's first use of the keys. Right. Here's what he said. You want to get to heaven? Here's the first key. Repent. Repent. Be 
baptized in Jesus' name. There's the second key. Here's the third key. You gotta get the Holy Ghost. Yes. You ought to be excited about that. Get your mind on it. Yeah. The gates of hell shall not even. It doesn't matter if all of hell came against that. It's not gonna prevail against your revelation. Just get your mind right. Yeah. There's way more important things than this coronavirus. Oh yeah. And what's more important is like what, what Brother PJ preached. And what I'm preaching tonight is get your mind in the right spot saying, I'm getting out of here one of these days. Right. It won't be too much longer till I get to go see my Jesus. That's what you ought to be excited about. Yeah. That's why I'm excited about living for God. Because it doesn't matter if all of hell came against this. I still got what's right. I still know who Jesus is. I got that revelation of one God. I got that revelation of who Jesus is. Yeah. It doesn't matter. There's only one God and his name is Jesus. Here's another thing I know. Let's turn to Romans, back to Romans. I never read this setting of scripture like this until today. Remember, I'm talking about your mind right. and getting your mind girded up. Right. And making sure that your mind is, is in the right spot because, man, you've got a lot of stuff coming against your mind. Oh, yeah. You've got to make sure that you're thinking about the right things. You've got to make sure that your mind is in the right spot. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it won't it just be. If you can't, what's it say? If you can't contend with the footmen, what are you going to do when the horses come? Right. What's going to happen if it gets worse? Yeah. I'll tell you what, my own personal opinion, I think America will be shaped differently from here on out. Yeah. We may never see it go back to what we thought was normal as before. Right. It could never change back. But it doesn't matter to me. Why? Because I'm going to go to heaven still. Yeah. I know what the book says. Yeah. I got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Now listen to this. I love what this says. Who, verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Here's how it starts. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sore? You think that's going to keep me from the love of Christ? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. Here's what he says. I already got my mind made up on this. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You got to get persuaded tonight. Yes. You got to get your mind made up. Who's going to separate me from loving my God? Because it says, love him with all your heart, love him with all your soul, love him with all your mind. Yeah. Nobody's going to separate me from loving my God. Well, what if they're going to kill you? It's not going to separate me from loving him because my mind is made up. I got my mind on my rack killed. Right. I'm, gonna, I'm persuaded in my mind. Nothing's going to separate me. Right. It says we're accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's what you're living. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, I'm excited about it. I get to go see Jesus. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Right. Bring it on. Woo. Why? I'm not, I want to go to heaven. But the thing is, is you've got to get... You gotta get ready so you can go too. Somebody can come to the music. I'm just about done. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Here's the deal. Like Brother PJ preached, judgment's coming. Oh yeah. All those co-workers I work with, you gotta start thinking about things the right way. You gotta get your mind on the right stuff. Yes. There is something about going to church all the time. There is something about watching it online. You gotta get engaged. You gotta get your mind right. 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 Yes. If you if you don't, man, all this stuff is gonna happen. This is 
all going to pass away. And you're going to be sitting there wondering, well, where did my husband go? Or where did my wife go? They, they didn't show up. Yeah. yeah. Think about it. You got, you got to get the Holy Ghost so you go too. Yeah. Wouldn't that be just the most horrible feeling on earth? When that rapture takes place and your spouse doesn't show up? Yeah. Because they got the Holy Ghost and they, they kept their mind right? I was thinking about those ten virgins. The five that were foolish. They went and knocked on the door. They said, let us in. They said, it's already over. It's shut. No more time. I called and you weren't ready. You weren't full of the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to tell you tonight how you keep your mind full of the Holy Ghost. You got to kick out all that garbage. All that stuff that's weighing you down. All that doubt, all that fear. God can't work with you if you're full of doubt. Yeah. Right. you got to start believing in the true things, the lovely things, the pure things, the things you've been taught. Get persuaded in your mind. It doesn't matter what happens to me. Yeah. It doesn't matter whatever come against me. Yeah. I'm going to love God with all my heart. I'm going to love Him with all my soul. I'm going to love Him with all my mind. It's important. Don't get caught up in the cares of this earth, of this world. God's coming back. If you think for one minute, I always thought that if I knew I was going to die, I would, would record a video of myself telling people that they need to get right with God and all the co-workers I work with. Tell you what, heaven's approaching faster than you can imagine. Judgment's coming. All this stuff, this stuff that's in the Bible, it's real. And I'm, I'm here standing tonight before you, and I know you're watching. You've got to start letting the cares of this life go. He already mentioned it tonight. All that's in the world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's what it comes down to. You've got to get to the point where you start letting some of that stuff go and start getting your mind on the things it should be on. And that's God. You gotta go figure out who God is. That's why we have Bible studies. That's why we're willing to do Bible studies online. It's not we don't want your money. It's biblical to give your tithes. That's all important. But the thing is, is you don't want your soul winding up in hell. You don't want to be burning for eternity. No way out. You gotta realize that just as much as heaven is real, hell is real. Amen. And all this devil, his whole job is, is to get you off course, to get you off track, to weigh on your mind, bring in all this distraction. That's why I don't like sports. Why? They're all things that keep your mind off of God. There could be a hundred people get up here tonight and testify about how they were in a horrible pit like Brother Rory preached this morning. But until he turned towards God and he started coming back towards God, you think we're going to drag you kicking and screaming into heaven? You're going to get to heaven because you want to go to heaven. Because you've sought out how to get to heaven. It's because you've logged in and looked at a preacher and started believing from God's divine word what he was preaching. And when you feel that conviction in your home, that's what you got to act on. Right. I can feel conviction in this place. I know you can feel it at your house. Here's the thing is you got to give in to that conviction. That's God trying to deal with you. That's God trying to make a way for you. He's trying to, he's trying to get you to an altar where you'll start thinking about it. He said, come reason with me. Come talk to me about it. Come tell me what you're thinking. Come tell me what's going on in your mind. Let me start helping you tonight. It's one thing. It's really hard to pray people through when they're not in the altar in front of you and you can lay hands on them. So you got to do this at home where you're at. You men, 
You gotta pray for your babies. You gotta, you gotta go lay hands on them. Yeah. You gotta lay hands on your wife. You gotta anoint their head. You gotta pray for them. We're not down here together at the altar where, where we can all just when when we have those altar calls where just God just moves so freely. You gotta do it in your home. You ought to find a place to pray wherever you're at tonight as they sing. And say, God, I don't understand it all. Talk to God like you're talking to a friend. God, I don't, I don't really understand what that preacher was talking about. But I feel, I feel you're tugging on my heart, God. That's how you start praying. God, I want your help. I need your help. Don't let an opportunity like this go tonight. Don't let an opportunity, don't miss out on one tonight to pray. Your job is going to burn up. Everything you know is going to burn up. But what's going to stay is your soul. And where is your soul going to wind up tonight? Get your mind right. Kick that stuff out of your heart. Oh, this is 